Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala mawuthu rahmatillahi ala amina nabiyina wa habibina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Amma ba'd, al-yawm 24 min shahari safar, al-muwafiq li 24 min shahari safar, 1442, al-muwafiq li 12 min shahari oktober, 2020. نواصل درسنا في هذا الكتاب المبارك الداء والدواء نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يغفر لمؤلفه ويرفع درجته في عليين وأن يبارك فينا وفي ما سنتعلمه إن شاء الله I was supposed to start the class very early today because from now onward the class on Monday will take only one hour so إن شاء الله I will from next week, be the light Allah will be very early, right uh, at five or even before five. I will get into the class, inshallah, uh, so that we can maximize the benefit. Uh, so let's uh, move on, inshallah. Uh, and we are still dealing with uh, <coughs> the issue between the dua, the relationship between the dua and the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the dua to be part of the qadr, you know, is a cause for certain things to take place. Uh, and this is how we're supposed to understand it. So in continuation uh, to that which we began uh, last, uh, with last week, uh, the Mu'allif says, وَقَدْ ذَكَرَ الْإِمَامُ أَحْمَدْ فِي كِتَابِ الزُّهُدْ أَثَرًا Imam Ahmad mentioned uh, Athar. Athar is just a narration. You know, uh, which is not attributed to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It might be from Israeliyat such as this, and uh, it might be uh, from the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or any event that took place in the time when the Athar is is being uh, mentioned uh, uh, to happen. So Imam Ahmad, Al Imam Ahmad, uh, fi kitab al Zuhud, in the book of Zuhud, he mentioned this Athar, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "An Allah." لا إله إلا أنا إذا رضيت باركت وإذا وليس لبركته وليس لبركتي منتهى الله سبحانه وتعالى says I'm Allah Allah means الإله والإله هو المعلوه 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 هو المعبود بحق يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى says he is the only one who is supposed to be worshipped uh, who deserves to be worshipped nobody deserves this except Allah سبحانه وتعالى so he says, I'm Allah, I am Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illa ana. I have no partner. There is none to be worshipped other than me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Ida raditu ba'raktu. When I'm pleased, I bless. SubhanAllah. Very interesting uh, statement. When I'm pleased, ba'raktu. I will uh, be so happy with that person whom I'm pleased with. And uh, ba'raktu, I will put barakah in his life. With no restriction to this barakah. إِذَا رَضِيتُ بَارَكْتُ When I'm pleased, I will put barakah in the life of this person. وَبَرَكَتْ وَلَيْسَ لِبَرَكَتِي مُنْتَهَا And there, will be, there is no end for my barakah. You know, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in a person, there will be no end for that barakah. Yani the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have an end. So unless if that person do something which... Uh, Cancel the cause. You know. Why do you get the barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because you make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, you make Allah happy with you. You please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you the barakah. So if you do not do, you know, if you don't do anything that can cause that cause of the barakah to be taken away from you, you know, then uh, the barakah will be continuous. What I'm trying to say is, when the barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given to you, it is given to you because of a cause. As long as you do not remove that cause, the barakah will remain with you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mubarak and always have barakah with him. And he always give barakah to those who deserve the barakah. And the barakah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have no end at all. Have no end. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always uh, yani, describe himself as uh, tabarak. تبارك الذي بيده الملك يعني الذي كثرت بركته وليس لبركته منتهى 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this uh, Athar, He says, I am Allah. إِذَا رَضِيْتُ بَارَكْتُ If I am pleased, I will put barakah in the life of that person. وَإِذَا بَارَكْتُ وَلَيْسَ لِبَارَكَتِي مُنْتَهَا And my barakah have no end at all. وَإِذَا غَضِبْتُ لَا عَنْتُ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ When I am angry with somebody, when I am angry, I curse. SubhanAllah. He says, وَإِذَا لَعَنْتُ وَإِذَا غَضِبْتُ لَعَنْتُ وَلَعَنَتِي تَبْلُغُ السَّابِعَ مِنَ الْوَلَدِ And if I curse, my curse can reach, can, can be extended to the seventh generation of the family member of that person who is cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means the seventh amongst your children, you know, child number seven, this, this curse might remain in the house until it reaches this person. Although this author is uh, part of the Israeliyat, but if you look at it, the meaning is, is perfect. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's barakah has no, has no end. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala occurs, tragedy is going to take place and a person might, might remain with this curse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why, my brothers and sisters, we should stay away from anything that can invite the curse from Allah. Such as taking riba. Allah SWT curse somebody who that, that, does that. Such as bribe, Allah SWT curse somebody who does that. You know, such as somebody who is making a stanchion, you know, those uh, sisters who don't agree with the, the size of the hair, they increase it, they add some attachments, they're cursed by Allah. And you have then some mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi as those who are cursed, and Allah SWT says, Allah al kathibin those people who are lying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse them. You have a couple of them who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse. And what does a curse mean? What does a curse mean? A curse means attardu min rahmatillahi azza wa jal. To be chased away from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when somebody is cursed by Allah, it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking him away from the mercy. So that's take place. And then the, the, the consequence of that curse is the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be, to be taking place. And that a person might get destroyed. Even if he doesn't get destroyed physically, but Allah SWT might cut him off spiritually. A person will not, will not have any relief in his life. You'll be depressed throughout your life. You will never relax. Allah SWT describes some of these people that he chased away from his mercy. He says, The example of this person is just like a dog that cannot rest at all. So that's happened when a person is cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as such, my dear brothers and sisters, we should really, really, really pay attention to these statements of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And wherever this curse is mentioned, a person should try and understand what it means and stay away from the causes. You know, because really we cannot handle this. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse a person, Allah, a person cannot handle it. So, as I said, such as taking riba, such as doing this and that, you know. So, when a person is cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this curse might remain with him, you know, until, until he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unless if he repents and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show mercy upon him and forgive. They brought uh, a case to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during one of the battles. And uh, they said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this person... His uh, female slave, he was about to have a relationship with her, you know, and she was pregnant at that moment. The Prophet ﷺ got extremely angry with him. SubhanAllah. He said, I fi sam'ihi wa basarihi. Is he going to feed him? Because when you have the water of somebody inside that womb, if another person comes and have a relationship, there will be a mixture of water, you know. And we don't know which one takes her place. This child is going to be, belong to who? Yes, it's the first one, but it is mixed with the second, the second ones also. Because sometimes you have this uh, sleeping embryo where the, the, the pregnancy sleeps. If a, wo if a woman is to marry, when she has a relationship with the second husband, the wake up that sleeping baby will come back again. So that means it is being fed by this one. So the Prophet ﷺ got angry with him because the 
Islamic principle is that لا توطو حامل حتى تضع ولا حائل حتى تستبرئ There is no way for a person to marry a sister who is pregnant until the delivery of the child. That's why if a woman is divorced and she's pregnant, the idda finishes when she delivered the child. That will be the longest idda. Like same goes to when the husband dies, the idda finishes when she delivers the child. Because one of the main purposes of the idda is to make sure that the, the womb is not carrying any, any child from the previous marriage. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Aghduhu fi sam'ihi wa basarihi, laqad hamamtu an 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 al'anahu la'anatan tadkhul ma'hu fi qabrihi." Subhanallah. He said, "Is he planning to feed the baby, the fetus in the womb, the baby, not the unborn child in the in the womb? Is he trying to feed him in his hearing and his uh, seeing?" He said, "I was about to curse him." The curse that will follow him until his grave, you know. So as such, Allah, we should really, really pay attention to, to, uh, to this. My brothers and sisters, nobody among us can handle the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can see the, the economic system nowadays in the world. No barakah, you know, that much in that which we are getting. The system is so contaminated, you know. So contaminated, you know. Wherever you go, this riba is chasing you. Whether you like it or you don't like it, you have to live with a system that is based on riba. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِن لَمْ تَفَعَلُوا فَأْذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ So you can, you, can, you can understand why aren't we succeeding, you know. Because we are declaring war. وَأَوْذُ بِاللَّهِ Against who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he says, either we stay away from riba, or we should get ready to fight Allah. And you know, when you are in a state of war with Allah, only one side wins. There is no possibility, you know, for the other side to win. So let's be very careful. على أن التقرب إلى الله رب العالمين وطلب مرض مرضاته والبر والإحسان إلى خلقه من أعظم الأسباب الجالبة لكل خير الله أكبر is very interesting it is it is confirmed by by the aql it is confirmed by the aql the aql the one that is in the heart means the aql of a person I mean I mean, I mean rationally a person understand uh, uh, I mean, this is part of our common sense and the natural disposition. You know, a person doesn't need any knowledge uh, for this. So, <coughs> uh, somebody else's mic is on. Uh, so, uh, according to the akal, you know, according to the akal, I mean, rationally, and this is part of. Uh, our uh, what do you call uh, disposition, a natural disposition that we do believe in, in the statement that Ibn Al Qayyim is going to mention. One naklu, and also the Quran also confirms this, this, and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ confirm it. Wal fitratu, and the fitra that Allah subhanahu wa taala—that's the natural disposition. The fitra that Allah subhanahu wa taala created people. <coughs> وَتَجَارِبُ umam And the experiences of the nations, regardless of their affiliation, regardless of their races, regardless of their languages, regardless of their religion, you know, regardless of their affiliations and their madahib and their aqaid. SubhanAllah. This is the greatest consensus you can ever see, you know. It means, basically, he's trying to tell you, human beings, wherever they are, regardless of their nature, they believe that التقرب إلى الله رب العالمين وطلب مرضاته والبر والإحسان إلى خلقه من أعظم الأسباب الجالبة لكل خير. Doing things that can bring you closer to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and looking for the pleasure of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and being kind and good and righteous and very dedicated and having good manners towards the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the greatest causes that can bring good to the life of humankind. Please do understand this properly. You're looking for success, you're looking for a good life, you're looking for a pleasant life, 
You don't want to be in trouble in this life. Wallahi, this is the, this is the solution. You know. and pay attention to these words and apply it. And I can guarantee you a very good and pleasant life. Pleasant life and good life, it means relaxation. To get relief from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be in a state of peace, to be at ease with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what, did, what must you do to get this? Come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do anything that can earn you the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be good, you know, very excellent when it comes to your dealing with others. You know, have, a good, have good manners when you deal with others. So then what will happen? You know, your life will be really excellent. Your life will be, will be excellent. وَأَضْضَادُهَا مِنْ أَكْبَرِ الْأَسْبَابِ الْجَالِبَةِ لِكُلِّ شَرٍ and the opposite of those statements that we have mentioned are the greatest causes that can bring tragedy and evil to the life of humankind. قَالَ فَمَسْتُجْلِبَتْ نِعَمُ اللَّهِ وَاسْتُدِفِعَتْ نِقْمَتُهُ بِمِثْلِ طَاعَتِهِ وَالتَّقَرُّ بِلَيْهِ InshaAllah. He says, you will never, you know, you will never bring the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. You want to attain the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his blessings, you will never reach that through something that is better than doing things that are bringing you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through obedience, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wal ihsan ila khalqihi. You want the ni'mah to be given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be very dedicated to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also between you and humankind, show support. Whenever somebody needs you, support him. You know, خَيْرُ النَّاسِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to worship him and also to benefit others. That's why المقصد الأساسي لحياة الناس is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to bring benefit to the people. That's the greatest maqsad for the sharia, to make the life of humankind easy. So sharia came to do what? To motivate people to participate in bringing good and also to participate in eradication of the evil and also to participate in reducing the size of the evil if they cannot remove it completely. To reduce the size of the evil if they cannot remove it completely. And also to bring all the good, or at least the vast majority of it, if they cannot attain all of the good. So these are the keys to success in this life. Dedication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Iman, and the translation of this Iman, which is righteousness and istiqama in the deen, and then being good to others. And this is, uh, found in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama when he says to Mu'adh ibn Jabal ittaqillaha haythu ma kunt wa atbi' as-sayyi'at al-hasanat tamhuha wa khaliq an-nas bi khuluq hasan very simple hadith very easy to memorize hadith but at the same time it ha- it has everything you need to be practicing in order to succeed in this in this life it says fear Allah subhanahu wa wherever you want wherever you are that means in and out your inside shouldn't be different from the outside. Unless if the outside is bad, the inside should be good. The best way to live is let your inside be better than your outside. You're very dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and very honest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the taqwa. And you're very religious. That means everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to do, you do. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to stay away from it, you stay away from it. Places that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you to go, you don't go. And places that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you to miss, you don't miss those places. This is Islam. And this is taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which basically means to put a barrier between you and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is that barrier? And that barrier is nothing other than the practice, practice of Islam, practicing Islam, based on the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So he says, wherever you are, that should be the relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are. And then atbi' sayyat al tabhuha. Whenever you are bad, you know, you did something wrong, you know, you follow it with the good good thing, you know. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ الطَّرْفَ النَّهَارِ وَزُلَفًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ ذَلِكَ ذِكْرًا لِلذَّكِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to establish the prayer. Day and night. He says, إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ This is uh, uh, what we call having a good relationship between you and, and yourself. Having a good relationship between you and, and yourself. So when you commit sin, you are having a bad relationship between you and yourself. When you commit sin, you are having a bad relationship with you on yourself. How to fix it? You repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get it? So having good relationship with Allah, that means you observe the taqwa. Having good relationship with yourself, that means whenever you do something wrong, you fix it. How to fix it? You repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately, we're more focusing on our physical health rather than the spiritual health, which is the most important one. Taking care of your heart, and this is what we call the tazkiyah to nafs. Allah says, Qad aflaha man zakkaha. The one who purify his soul succeeds. You're looking for the most successful person in this life is somebody who purifies his soul. And the one who destroy, you know, make his soul dirty, fails in life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذَكَّ رَسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى so whenever you do something which is harmful to yourself, you know, you fix it. You know, and you should be more focusing, you know, focusing on the spiritual diseases. You know, when you commit sin, you're destroying your life in this life and also in the hereafter. Because Allah SWT will put a lot of limitations in your life. You will never relax in this life. And when you go to the hereafter also, that will be the greatest tragedy. So be good to yourself. In the way you look for a medical doctor when you are sick physically, you should also look for a spiritual medical doctor when you are sick spiritually. And that should be more important actually than, than the physical illness that you are, you are having. And then the Prophet said, And be good to others. SubhanAllah. With Allah SWT you are good. With yourself you are good. And with people you are good. So try, wherever you go, be nafa lil muslimin. And, and please, my dear brothers and sisters, do understand this. There is no point in fighting people. Wallahi, you don't need to do that. You can convey the message always in a very good way. You don't need to fight. You don't need to shout. You can always convey the message. And do it in a nice way. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, مَا كَانَ الرِّفْقُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا زَانَهُ وَلَا نُزِعَ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا شَانَهُ Whenever you put leniency in something, it will make it beautiful. You remove it from something, it will make it ugly. So be lenient, be gentle, and bring good to the people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna mina shajari shajarun, la yaskutu wa raquha, akhbiruni ma hiya. Fatafa nasu fi shajar al-bawadi. Abdullah ibn Umar says, I was sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a group of his uh, elderly companions, you know. Those older companions, they were there next to him, and Abdullah ibn Umar was there. He was young. So the Prophet said, Inna min shajari shajarun, wa innaha shajaratun mubaraka. There is a shajara, min shajari shajar. Among the trees, there is a tree, which is a blessed tree. You know. This tree is blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La yaskutu wa raquha. The leaves of this uh, tree doesn't fall down, rarely fall down by itself. Somebody has to bring it out. So, everyone gets inside the, the, the forest and thinking, which one is that? Mango, orange tree, apple tree, grape tree, and all of these things, you know. This one said this, this one said that, this one said this, this one said that. Abdullah ibn Umar says, It comes to my mind that this is Nakhla. This is Nakhla. Nakhla means uh, uh, tree, the farm tree, the date tree. So, he says, uh, this is... I, I have in my mind, but I couldn't say it to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that to me is a the the date uh, tree. Why? Because I found the mashaykh. His father was there, Abu Bakr was there, and all of those great companions were there. So he felt shy to be correct, while all the the other people are wrong, you know. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Here, nakhla was a palm, palm tree, you know." So Allah, he described it as Shajaratul Mubarakah. 
That's why they said if you go even deeper to find the names of the, the tamr, you know, the, the shajara for the tamr, it's Ibn Ashbah al Ashjar Shabah lil Insan. Akthar al Ashjar Shabah lil Insan. Even the name, also, the name, it has so many names. It have Ibn Karim, Al Bakhil. You know, among the, 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 the palm trees, you know, they have one of them called Karim. They have one of them called Bakhil. They have, just like human beings, you have the, uh, what do you call the miser, you have the, the stingy, you have the, 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 the generous. You know, you have every kind of uh, mentalities. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described the believer. He said, Wa inna hamathal mu'min is similar to a believer. That tree and that tree. There was a research done, you know, uh, a few years ago. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a conference, I guess. They're trying to find how to utilize this tree in everything, you know. They're trying to see how to get the benefit from, the, uh, from this tree. Not just eating the, the fruit, but how to utilize the other part of it, you know. And subhanAllah, I was like, uh, this is, this is, you guys are too late and backward, you know. I was reading a statement by Ibn Hajar. You know, he was saying that it has been discovered that almost every single part of this tree is beneficial to humankind. SubhanAllah. So that you can understand why the Prophet is describing a believer as what? As a palm tree. He said it's just like the palm tree. What does that mean? It means wherever a believer, uh, I mean, uh, reside, he benefits. You know, SubhanAllah. What an interesting life is this. Wherever you go, people are so happy to be with you. This is the best life, my brothers and sisters. Wallahi. And I, I wish you can enjoy it. how interesting this is this, you know. Don't fight people. And try benefit them and be patient with people. And wherever you go, make sure that benefit is coming from you. Nobody is harmed by you. Yeah, sometimes people are going to harm by you accidentally, you know. You live with people, you're going to harm them, they harm you. But try, in most instances, the vast majority, let's say 99% of your life, 99.999% of your life is bringing good to the people. Always bringing good to the people. Let those people who get harmed by you, they get harmed by you by default because you're bringing good. There are some people who don't like good because if you bring that good, people will understand. And if they understand the good, what is, what is it going to happen? They will stay from the haram and those guys are enjoying from the haram. You know? So once you bring the good and the community understand the good, that means haram is going to be gone. Allah says, When the truth comes, the falsehood is going to perish. It's going to go, it's going to fizzle, it's going to be destroyed, you know. So for sure those evil ones, they will never be happy. Somebody whose life is based on bribe, and you convince those people who are giving him the bribe not to bribe again. What does that mean? You're harming him according to what he thinks, you know. According to the way he thinks, you're harming him. But in reality, you are benefiting him, actually. In reality, you're bringing good to that person. The Prophet wasallam said, Unsur akhaka zaliman aw mazluma. Support and help your brother whether he is oppressed or he is an oppressor. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we know how to, how to help him and support him. We understand how to support him if he is oppressed by others. But how can we support him if he is oppressing others? He said, Tamna'uhu min al-dhul. You stop him from oppression. That's the support to him also. You stop him from the oppression. That's the greatest support. So uh, this is uh, more than enough for us, inshallah, to... Uh, enjoy living a good life bi idnillah ta'ala qala wa qad rattab allah subhanahu wa ta'ala husul al khayrat fi ad dunya wal akhirati wa husul al shurur fi ad dunya wal akhirati fi kitabihi ala al a'mal tartib al jaza'i ala al sharti wal ma'lul wal ma'lul ala al illati wal musabbab wal musabbab ala al sabab ibn qayyim says and we found also in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bays the good result on what? On good causes, you know. So if you have a good cause, the result is going to be good. If you have an evil cause, the result is going to be evil. This is just like, the, uh, I mean, like when you make something conditional. You do this, I give you this. So the condition for that person to get it is this thing that you are mentioning now. You mention something as a condition. I will give you this money, but my condition is to memorize Quran. Although that's wrong also to be practicing this with the children and also with anyone. All of these prizes that 
we're given to a Quran competition, sometimes, sometimes they motivate people to engage in doing things for the sake of the dunya. Okay? We should have other forms of motivation instead of this. That will be better, inshallah. So, but I'm just giving it as an example. Uh, if you help me in this, I will do this for you. So you're making uh, your action, you know, based on what? Based on him fulfilling the condition you set up. Or sometimes Allah SWT will make it as illa. You know, the sabab, the, the sabab, the reason why, you know, and the illa, the effects, and the reason or the cause, the reason why this happens, it is because of that. Means if this takes place, then this will take place. As a illa wul ma'lul. Okay? Illa is the effect, and the line uh, principle, the link, the connection. You know, uh, that's that's what we call illa. Okay. What sabab bil musabab? Sabab is the cause. Wal musabab al sabab. The effect is the musabab, and the sabab is the cause. So when you have the cause being implemented, this that uh, uh, that means the the effect is going to take place. When the cause exists, then the effect is going to take place. So we found that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, I mean, based the existence of good on causes and things that a person should do to attain those uh, good results. وَهَذَا فِي الْقُرْآنِ يَزِيدُ عَلَىٰ أَلْفِ مَوْضِعٍ Ibn al-Qayyim says in the Qur'an you found more than 1,000 places where this is mentioned. فَتَارَةً يُرَتِّبُ الْجَزَاءَ عَلَىٰ الْحُكْمِ الْكَوْنِ وَالْأَمْرُ الشَّرْعِ Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will base the consequence. You know, the consequence al al hukum al kawni wal amru al shari. These are related these are related to the al qada al kawni wal qada al shari. You have hukum Allah al kawni, and that means it doesn't change. It's part of the system. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that something is going to happen in this way, and uh, it will never be changed. When you have the shari'i, this is based on the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa and the command. People might do and they might not do. But it's part of the qada and the hukum and the amr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which some people might follow, some people might not follow. That's why you have two types of qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qadr kawni and qadr shari'i. Qadr kawni is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed which has to happen. Nothing can stop it. No matter what, it must take place. No matter what. It doesn't matter whether it is good or bad, but it has to take place. You find the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are fighting each other. They fought during the, uh, the, the, the time of Ali bin Abi Talib. You know. It was very unfortunate. But this is a qadr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that is going to happen. And it happened precisely in the way Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wanted it. They were the cause. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, in the Quran, when he talks about the children of Israel, he says, "Walau sha Allahu maktatal aladina min baadihim min baadi ma jaathum al bayinatu, walakin ixtalafu, fa minhum man aman wa minhum man kafar. Walau sha Allahu maktatalu, walakin Allah hai falu ma yadid." He said, "If Allah subhanahu wa taala wish, they will never fight. They will never fight. You know, they will never fight. Walakin Allah hai falu ma yadid." But Allah subhanahu wa taala is the dua of whatsoever He wishes. So that's kauni. Rain, people, you know, uh, where a person is born, you know, is a lot, is a lot, is a lot, is much more than the qada al shari. You get the idea? Al qada al kawni, these are the matters of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which must take place, but it doesn't mean, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, but it has to take place. Contrary to the qada al shari, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed to happen. It might happen, it might not happen. But it must be something that Allah SWT loves. It must be something that Allah SWT loves. And they said these are matters of the Sharia. People might accept, people might not accept. Allah says, Wallahu yirid an yatuba alaykum. Allah wants to forgive you. But people might repent and they might not repent. So this is the difference between qada al kawni and qada al shari. So sometimes Allah SWT will base the consequence on these, one of these two, two issues. You know, one of these two, two issues, okay? When the illa that is appropriate, you know, appropriate illa exists. Like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا عَاتَوْ عَمَّا نُهُ عَنْهُ قُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُوا قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished the Jew 
And uh, this is uh, the story of those people who are not giving da'wah. And by the way, inshallah, the method that I will be following in translating ayat, I will do the, the translation of an ayah instructing the lesson. So sometimes we have to go back to, uh, what do you call, the, 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 the history of the ayah itself, if it does exist. You know? And uh, the part that he did not mention, sometimes we have to mention the completion, and then we go, we go together. So in this case, Allah SWT was talking about those people, this is a city that, uh, that is next to the, to the river. And Allah SWT told them, because they were Jews, they were Jews, you know, Allah SWT told them not to catch fish, you know, not to hunt on Saturday. So unfortunately, they did not listen. Some of them listened and some of them did not listen and some of them became neutral. You know. So those people who are, uh, are, are advising, you know, they kept on advising them. And the neutral people, they, they became demotivators. You know. They are demotivating those people who are giving da'wah. And this is one of the most dangerous things that a person can do. You do not participate in the da'wah. Instead of supporting the people who are making the da'wah, you are demotivating them. That's very dangerous. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those people who are demotivating, they told the righteous people, لِمَ تَعِذُونَ قَوْمًا إِلَّهُ مُهْلِكُمْ أَوْ مَعَذِّبُهُمْ عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا قَالُوا مَعَذِرَةً إِلَى رَبِّكُمْ وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ Listen to this, my brothers and sisters, you know. They give da'wah, although they know these people might not accept, but they still give. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to live like this. Have husnul dhan in people. You know, we make conclusions sometimes, you know that? That this person will never listen, you waste your time. Somebody told me, you're just wasting your time. SubhanAllah. You're giving da'wah to these uh, children. Somebody told me, you're just wasting your time. They will never listen, you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them, you know to change their mentality, to readjust the way they're thinking. Those righteous people, they told the demotivators, they said, Those demotivators told them, why do you waste your time, you know, advising somebody who is going to be destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the good one told them, no, it is not like that. Allah wants us to have husn al dhan First, we're doing this so that we can have our excuse with the last one that we did not participate and we warned them not to do it. And secondly, they said, Who knows? Yesterday, if they were not listening, today they might listen. Allah Akbar. If they do not listen yesterday, today they might listen. I wish all of our dua are like that. Whereby your hope and your objective is about how to convince a person, you know, how to give him the best, how to use the best methodology in which he will get convinced and accept that which you are calling him for. Unfortunately, in most instances, we are not like that. We just want to convey the information regardless of what and no matter what. And we don't care about what will happen, you know. So they said, Fir'aun, we already know Fir'aun, right? Fir'aun, we already know Fir'aun. If you are to be questioned, if you are to be asked, what do you think about Fir'aun? Do you think he will accept? He will say no. Knowing who is Fir'aun, you say no. But still Allah sent Musa to him. And Allah told Musa and Harun, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ لَيِّنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ وَيَخْشَى Speak with Fir'aun in a very humble tone. You know, be lenient, be gentle, use wisdom. Maybe he will listen. You know? Allah knows kawnan that he will never listen. Allah doesn't, Allah doesn't want you to have this uh, bad expectation. Always be in the sense of husnullah. So they told them, Maybe they will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذَكِّرُوا بِهِ أَنْجَيْنَا الَّذِينَ أَنْهَا عَنَ السُّوءُ وَأَخَذْنَا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا بِعَذَابٍ بَئِيسٍ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ فَلَمَّا عَتَوْا عَمَّا نَهُوا عَنْهُ قُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُوا قِرَدَةً خَاسِحِينَ When they forgot that which they were reminded uh, with, you know, what happened? Allah says, أَنْجَيْنَا الَّذِينَ أَنْهَا عَنَ السُّوءُ We saved those people who are reminding others to do righteous deeds. And those people who oppress themselves, we destroy them. You know, so the only one who was saved is the Dai. How about those people who are demotivated? 
The scholars said most likely they were included in the punishment because Allah mentioned that the only person who was saved is the one who reminded others not to be involved in the sins. So that's very dangerous for you to live in the midst of a people who are committing sin and you're not engaging in, in the da'wah, uh, what do you call, project. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا عَتَوْا عَتَوْ عَمَّا نُهُ عَنْهُ قُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُوا قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِ when they're so arrogant and they stay away from the reminders that are coming from the righteous one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we told them, Kunu qiradatan khasi. We asked them to just turn into qirada, pigs, I'm sorry, and monkeys in a state of humiliation. Imagine a person who used to be human being in a few minutes and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned him into something else. So that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry. He turned them into other Creatures, So you see here Allah says, You know, Allah SWT already decreed that these people are going to be changed into monkeys. But he based that on a cause. And this cause was based on their attitudes and their evil manners, which Allah SWT knows that they are going to be behaving in this way. That's why Allah SWT has written it before. That these group of Jews, they are going to behave in this way because of their own choices. Not Allah SWT is pushing them to choose it. No, they chose it by themselves. Allah gave them an absolute freedom to choose what they want to do. And He reminded them not to go in the wrong way. Wallahu fa'alil So, qaddar lahum kawnan. It's based on the qada kawni of Allah SWT that they will be destroyed in this way. But this has a cause. What is the illa? There's a wasf al-munasib because this one fit them and fit their attitude also. Not just staying away from the da'wah, but demotivating the du'at. Allah said, قُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُوا قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِينَ فَلَمَّا عَتُوا عَمَّا هُوَ عَنْهُ قُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُوا قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِينَ SubhanAllah. That's why he says, وَإِذْ تَعَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَيَبْعَثَنَ رَبُّكَ لَيَبْعَثَنَ عَلَيْهِمْ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ يَسُومُ مُسُوءَ الْعَذَابِ إِنَّ Look at an excellent conclusion that will have you to increase your trust you know, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will never be taken away completely as long as you're willing to come back. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the door. Unless if you reach a situation where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blocks the means, you cannot see the truth. You still have the freedom, but you don't see the truth. And that's when a person reaches really a bad situation where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blocking all the means for him to get back. But usually the system is based on acceptance of tawbah at any moment somebody returns back to Allah as long as he doesn't see the angel of death or the sun rising from, from the west. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you remember Allah asked the Prophet Allah to remember the announcement and the promise by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will keep on sending to the Jews, you know, somebody who will taste them the worst type of punishment until the day of judgment. Because he told them in Surah Al-Isra, If you're going to come back to disobedience to Allah SWT and causing this corruption and, and destruction on earth, Allah SWT says, we're going to come back to sending somebody who will taste you the worst type of punishment. But then what did he say? He said, Inna rabbaka wa innahu rahim. Allah Akbar. He says, your Lord, Allah SWT, is the quickest when it comes to the punishment. Wa innahu rahim. And also at the same time, Allah SWT is the oft forgiving. I mean, the one who forgives more than anyone else. And he always forgives. The scholar said it is so beautiful how Allah SWT threatened them. But at the same time, فَتَحَ لَهُمْ بَابَ الْفَيْأَةِ And he opens for them the door for U-turn. No matter how much far they go, Allah SWT opened open a new door for them to make a U-turn. They can still come back to Allah SWT and get accepted by by him. In another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا آسَفُوا نَنْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ When they make us angry, انتقمنا مِنْهُمْ And he was talking about the people of Fir'aun. They were so arrogant in the way their leader, Fir'aun, he even claimed the divinity. You know, it is so bad to claim divinity, but he did not just claim the divinity, but he claims that he is on top of Allah. He says, أَنَّ رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى Allah says, فَأَخَذَهُ اللَّهُ نَكَالَ الْآخِرَةِ وَالْأُولَىٰ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَعِبْرَةً لِمَنْ يَخْشَىٰ Very small 
amount of mention in Surah Al-Nazi'at, you know, a few lines Allah SWT mentioned, but it has all the lessons a person needs to succeed in this life. That you just have to maintain the separation between you and Allah SWT, that, that you are makhluk and Allah SWT is Allah. And you have to worship Him alone. Don't take any part of the divinity of Allah SWT and attribute it to yourself because you cannot handle that. It is bigger than the position of any of the creation of Allah SWT, including the Arsh. Allah SWT is alone. La ilaha illa hu. When somebody attributes to himself this attribute, you know, he should just wait for what? For the punishment from Allah SWT. As he says, Al Izzu idari wal kibriya uridai. From an nazaani fihi ma, you know, adhabtuhu or kama kala on social. Allah SWT says, Al Izz wal kibriya. These are the arrogance, you know, and, and being not, not in control by anyone, you know. Nobody can tell you. You are the only one who decide, and nobody can check what you're doing. That's the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. He says, whoever come and mix me in one of these two things, he says, one of them is my garment, and the other one is my, uh, izar is the is garment that you put underneath. The rida is the one that you put on top, you know. Like the one who is going to for hajj, you see, he put two pieces of, uh, fabric, one of them underneath and the other one on top. The, the, the one underneath is called Izar. The one on top is called Rida. So Allah SWT described his Izza and his uh, Kibriya. And these are the attributes which human beings cannot attribute to themselves. Although we find some people doing that. you know. So whoever puts them to himself, Allah SWT says, I would definitely punish him in this life. Different types of punishment. The worst type of punishment that ar an arrogant person receives is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to deprive him from seeing the truth in this life. So be very careful, my brothers and sisters. Be humble. Don't you ever show arrogance to anyone. Be humble. مَا تَوَاضَعَ عَبْدٌ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا رَفَعُ الله. You will never humble yourself, you know, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to raise you up. You want to be elevated in ranking? You want respect in this life? Be humble. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make everyone respect in you. So this person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will deprive him from seeing the truth. You know, one of the punishments for an arrogant person, you know, is that you will not be able to see the truth. Allah says, أَصْرِفُ عَنْ آيَاتِ الَّذِينَ يَتَكَبَّرُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَإِنْ يَرَوْا كُلَّ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَا وَإِنْ يَرَوْا سَبِيلَ الرُّشْدِ لَا يَتَّخِذُهُ سَبِيلًا وَإِنْ يَرَوْا سَبِيلَ الْغَيِّ يَتَّخِذُهُ سَبِيلًا You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will block the means for them to see the truth. That's why the scholars say, لا يتعلم Mustahil wala mustakbir. Two people will never learn. An arrogant person and a shy person. Shy person means the person who, who is not asking. He needs to ask, but he doesn't ask. And knowledge is not like that. You should ask. Whenever you need to ask, you should ask. You know, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be shy in your life. No, when it comes to knowledge, no shyness. When it comes to knowledge, no shyness. What, I, what, I, what do I mean by no shyness? You mean any question that you need to ask, just ask. He came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and she said, Ya Rasulullah, inna Allah la yastahi min al haq That's why Aisha, Aisha radiallahu anha said, I really, really enjoy living with the sisters from the Ansar because shyness never stopped them from uh, educating themselves. You know, they ask any question that comes to their mind as long as they need it. You know. So the woman said, Ya Rasulullah, Allah doesn't feel shy of anything as long as it is, tr it is the truth. Allah smart doesn't feel shy of saying the truth. فَهَلْ عَلَى الْمَرْأَةِ مِنْ غُسْلٍ إِذَا هِيَ احْتَلَمَتْ Is it obligatory upon a woman to make ghusl of janaba when she see a wet, a wet dream? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yes. إِذَا هِيَ رَأَتِ الْمَاءِ He said, it's true. Yes, she has to take ghusl. As long as she sees water coming out of her, then she must perform the ghusl. So no shyness when it comes to learning and, and education and also arrogance is rejected in all of it. Forms. Maybe in the battlefield when you are uh, involved in the army. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا آسَفُوا نَنْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ So this, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed Fir'aun and his people is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that destruction is based on what? Al-wasful munasib. What is the wasful munasib? The illa, which is they made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angry by their attitude, which I quoted for you some of, some of them. So as I said, the class is supposed to be uh, ended. I will stop here, inshallah. Unfortunately, uh, uh, next class, be the light, Allah will compensate you.
next class we can taste uh, as much as we can but every every monday the class will begin at five and end by six be in the ta'ala so abdurrahman if we have question please do quickly ask uh in the ta'ala i will take some and then the rest i will delay them until the next class Yeah, if uh, no, this 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 is when when they are discovered by the, discovered by the authority. Uh, if a person committed adultery and he has uh, he has a wife, well, or she committed adultery and she has a husband, they should repent to Allah SWT, both of them. They are not supposed to go and report themselves to the authority. They should repent to Allah SWT and stop doing it forever. That's it. Then they can maintain that marriage. But at the same time, if the wife is committing adultery and the husband knows about that, either she repent or he has to cut off that marriage. He cannot stay with her. If he stays with her, he is n n nobody except one of those people who are committing adultery with her. The same goes to the husband who commit adultery. Uh, if uh, the wife knows about that, she has to file a divorce. She must get divorced if he's not going to repent. If he's going to repent, then he repents. They can maintain the marriage. Uh, but if he doesn't want to repent, she has to uh, go away from that, from that marriage. She must. Otherwise, she will be also one of those people who are committing zina with him. Get it? Uh, and Saada. So that's how it is applicable on both married and, not, and unmarried people. The second question is uh, regarding the companion that always ended his uh, rakat with Surah Ikhlas. Does that mean he recited the Surah in the first rakat followed by Surah Ikhlas? Yeah, the literal meaning of the hadith uh, means that in every rak'ah, uh, Sa'ada, he recited Surah Al-Fatiha and Surah uh, Ikhlas. So that means Fatiha and then Ikhlas. Fatiha, Surah, and then Ikhlas. You know. uh, Fatiha, uh, in the last surah, Rakat, Fatiha and Ikhlas. Okay, if he has chosen another surah, he finished that surah and then Surah Al-Ikhlas. That's why they found it strange. You know, that's why they found it very strange. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mustafa, inshallah, next class. Sorry, inshallah. <laughs> I forgot. Okay. That's Abdurrahman's fault. He should remind me before I come to the class. <laughs> okay, inshallah. Sheikh Mustafa, I will, within Allah Ta'ala, send you the message. Uh, before the next class, I will send you a personal message with the answer uh, to your question, and then I will repeat it when I meet people, inshallah. Barakallah. Question by someone named Shahu. Shahu, can you please explain to us the categories of Nasif and Mansukh? Uh, okay. Uh, Nasikh or Mansukh, uh, any, around uh, uh, three categories where the text is gone and, uh, and, and uh, the hukum also is gone. So you have sometimes Allah SWT will abrogate the text and uh, also Allah SWT will abrogate the, the hukum. So both are gone, the text and the hukum. And sometimes the text will be gone, but the hukum remains. And sometimes the hukum will be gone, but the text remains. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, reduced the sound. Aisha radiallahu anha said, كَانَ فِي مَا أُنزِنَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ عَشْرُ رَضَعَاتٍ يُحَرِّمْنَا ثُمَّ نُسِخْنَ بِخَمْسٍ مَعْلُومَاتٍ وَتُوفِّيَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَهُنَّ مِمَّا يُتْلَى مِنْ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ Aisha رضي الله عنها said كان فيما أنزل من القرآن It used to be part of the Quran عشر رضاعات يحرمنا That if a person, I mean a woman breastfed a child ten times What do I mean by ten times? When the child is hungry he comes to the mother and he sucked the, 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 the breast. You know, he, he started uh, taking the milk. So he will keep taking, keep taking, and then he got tired, and then he stopped to, to breathe. That's one. 
when he goes back again, you know, in one sitting, you know, when he goes back again, that's number two. When he leaves it, that's number, uh, and he comes back again, that's number three. So if he does that in one sitting or in uh, several sittings, you know, not necessarily one. If he does, whatever he does in the first sitting, she counted. And the next one also he does like that. When it reached ten times like this, then that boy, that child, that girl, you know, that baby becomes like her biological child in terms of relationship. That means she cannot marry him and he cannot marry her. And also he cannot marry her daughters, you know. And on and on. Okay, it has the, their own hukum. So Aisha said, This one used to be in the Quran. Where is it? Nobody can tell me where he sees this in the Quran. It doesn't exist. Aisha says, It used to be in the Quran. Thumma And then Allah SWT abrogated these uh, 10 bi khamsin ma'lumatin with 5. So he reduces to 5. Uh, to five. Okay, Allah SWT reduces it to, to 5. So it used to be 10, but then Allah, Allah SWT abrogated the text. So you can see the text was abrogated, you know. And uh, how about the hukum? The hukum also is gone. The text that talks about ten is gone, and the hukum of the ten also is gone. Do you get that's the first type of the nasqa where both are gone. The text is gone, and the hukum also is gone. But the second ayah that was revealed, which says five radat, now only five breastfeedings. Uh, what what does what does uh, I mean? Where is this in the Quran? This one also is gone. But Aisha says Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam died while people are still reading this from the book of Allah subhanahu wa taala. The hukum remain, you know, that if a person does it five times, then he becomes like the the what he called the child of that that sister, and the husband who is the owner of the the milk also. Do you get an idea? So the text is gone, but the hukum remains. This is another, another type of naskh. So sometimes Allah SWT will abrogate the text and the hukum remains. In the, in the Quran, Allah SWT talks about the idda, which used to be, uh, Allah says, لِلَّذِينَ تَفْوَنَ مِنْكُمْ وَيْدَرُونَ أَزْوَاجًا يَتَرَبَّسْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ وَالَّذِينَ يَتَفْوَنَ مِنْكُمْ يَتَفْوَنَ مِنْكُمْ وَيْدَرُونَ أَزْوَاجًا يَتَرَبَّسْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ أَرْبَعَةَ عَشْرٍ وَعَشْرًا If a person died, uh, the wife is supposed to stay for four months, ten days. In uh, in uh, in the first part of uh, what do you call it, the early days of Islam, it used to be one year. She has to stay for the waiting period for the period of one year. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says uh, one one year. So this one year remains. The text is there in the Quran, but the hukum is gone. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala when he mentioned the one year. But he abrogated this one year with something else. But where is the text? The text is there in the Quran, in the same Surah Al-Baqarah, the second page before this one. So, uh, I mean, the page where Allah SWT talks about the, the, the waiting period. So the text remains. The text that says one year remains. But the hukum of that text is, is, the, is gone. Did you get an idea? And then Allah SWT revealed another one, which is applicable up, up to date, which is the abroga abrogation itself. So this is another type of a naskh where the text remain, uh, I'm sorry, the text is gone, but the hukum remain. And sometimes you have the text is uh, remaining and the hukum is, is gone. Do you get an idea? Uh, sometimes the text, as I said, text remain, uh, so the text is gone, but the hukum remains. Like the, the case of Ar-Rajum, you know, we stone a person till death. It used to be part of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Umar radiallahu anhu said. Whether you agree with the ayah that says, A shaykh wa shaykhatu idha zanaya farjumuhu mal battata nakalam min Allah, wallahu azizun haki. There is a hadith that says that this used to be part of the Quran, that Allah says, uh, 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 an, an old man and an old woman that, that committed zina is referring to somebody who is married or has been married before. They committed zina, they should be stoned till death. This hadith, somebody says, some scholars said, is weak. But we believe that there used to be an ayah which talks about the rajm, stone until death. Because Umar said that in a sahih. It's very authentic hadith attributed to Umar. He said it used to be an ayah that we used to read in the Quran. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abrogated that ayah, but he kept the hukum. The hukum remains. Because the Prophet was stoned until death. Around three to four people were stoned by the Prophet until death before.
because of this. So these are the, the three types of uh, nasq uh, when we're talking about the category of the nasq where the, the text is uh, gone and, the, uh, and also the hukum is gone and also sometimes the hukum is gone but the text is there and sometimes the text is, uh, is there but the hukum is, is gone. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good. Something about Yasin Ibn. If we have uh, neighbors, uh, for example, who watch uh, Korean dramas and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, we would suggest them to watch Ritugrun series, uh, which is a series whereby they talk about history mm -hmm. uh, of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, although there is some Sufi stuff and practices in that series. Is it okay to suggest them to watch that instead of watching dramas? Uh, this, the series is about what? Uh, uh, it's a very famous series from Turkey. Uh, it talks about the father of uh, Rahman, uh, the founder of the Ottoman Empire, I think. Mm. Uh, and its history, it has some relation to the spread of Islam and Islamic history and whatnot. Mm. No, as long as, the most important thing is, as long as it is Barnamaj uh, Haddaf. Uh, Haddaf means it has a very good uh, purpose and objective which support Islam. And it doesn't have evil in it. That's it. It doesn't have evil in it. No deviation. Uh, it's okay for you to advertise the project. Any, any, other, any other project. You know. When there is something which is haram, people are watching. They shouldn't wait for alternative. They should obey Allah SWT even if they don't have alternative. Because alternative could be silent. Could be nothing. You know, That's alternative also. You do it but now don't do. That's also an alternative. That's why they, they have in the Nasq and Nasq ila ghayri badal. Allah says, Ma nansakh min ayatin aw nunsiha na'ti bi khayri minha aw mithilha. We will never abrogate an ayah or we cause you to forget that ayah except that we will give you better or something similar to it. That's why they ask this question. Is it possible to have an abrogation but there is no alternative? There is no substitute? They said, yes, it is possible. Allah SWT will remove it but he doesn't tell, doesn't tell it to do something else. That's okay. 100% okay. But we can also call it badal. Before, before you are asked to do it but now you are not, asked to do, you are not, you are not supposed to do it. You are not required to do it. That's alternative also. That's something else, you know. May Allah SWT grant us good. So people shouldn't be waiting for alternative. What is wrong is wrong. What is right is right. They should follow the right and stay away from uh, from the wrong. May Allah SWT guide us to truth. So if that, uh, uh, what you call documentary that you mentioned is good, you know, it doesn't have evil in it. If, it is, if that is an evil in it, then you don't promote evil to the people. Allahu Alam. Actually, there is evil in it, there is non woman there is a bit of a serial. It is a serial. Uh, so, so if that is, that's why I like to give principle, you know, if you have people and not dressing properly and things that Allah SWT said we shouldn't do, we're going to be doing them in that place, then we should. Otherwise, how does it work? Allah SWT says, lower your gaze and then somebody put things which are not, uh, are not going to support this fact, you know. They portray yourself in the place where everyone have to go and do and sometimes they don't dress properly and they portray themselves in that place. So it's better to look for something else. We should try and do our own version. You know, may Allah SWT guide us to truth. Also the fact that it has some Sufi practices, it's better to avoid that. Yeah, Wallahu Alam, any practice that goes against uh, Islam whatsoever, so from the Sufis or from whoever, any, uh, they, whoever a person uh, is, once he does something that is against Islam, regardless of their nature. Whoever goes against Islam, Sufi, Sunni, Salafi, Tabligi, Shi'i, and whoever. You know. The point is, Abdurrahman, what a person is doing, is it Islam or not Islam? That's it. Mm. May Allah guide us to the truth. Question by Thoban. Is financial support for Islam enough to not be good with the Ashab Salaf? Uh, financially support, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you, you're part of the Dao the, 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 the actually, so Thoban, <laughs> you, are, you are part of the Dao. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. 
You might be given the same reward they are giving. Mm-hmm. Can so. a person do dua while lying down? Yes. It's okay. Inshallah. And how would he raise his hands? The same thing. When he is lying down, then... <laughs> okay. He would not be pointing it there towards his hand. That would be okay. I know. When he lies down, he just, just put it next to your chest. Like somebody who is making dua. That's it. Inshallah. Another question by the brother. Is there any preference to recite it for silently or aloud? Uh, mod- moderate. The best is to be moderate. Unless if you are disturbing somebody who is sleeping, then you make it silently. Or you are reciting next to somebody who prays, then you make it silently. Hmm. Okay, Abdurrahman, how many questions left? Last question, Isha. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Is it true that a person can be interrogated or questioned in the grave? Hundred years. Uh, for what? A person be inter- interrogated or questioned in the grave for hundred years. Uh, no, there's no such thing. The question in the grave take a moment, and then the person will know his destination. It doesn't take that long. No, it doesn't take that long. It depends on who this person is. It, dep- it doesn't take that long. According to what we got from the Prophet Sallallahu it takes a moment person finish all the questions because they will ask you three questions to answer them you fail or you pass and based on that that your your final destination will be decided mm. may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but there is nothing called 100 years for questioning and all this may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good inshallah so if there is uh, any other question please uh, do excuse me for today inshallah abdurrahman will uh, bring all the other questions in the next uh, to the next uh, class inshallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you good and may allah love you all may allah be with you and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in your life and uh, see, show us the day inshallah we will be uh, having the better gathering inshallah in firdaus al-ala innahu bi kulli jamilin kafil subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik بارك الله فيكم